dressed as hair! Yeah, it is! Do you know what you're going to be dressed up as? I'm going to be a werewolf! 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 Hello, Mr. Werewolf! Santa Claus? Tales from the Bus Part 2, let's go! So, um, as a side note, I know of a YouTuber who was also a school bus driver who recently got fired due to his videos. There's a whole story behind that, but because of that, I decide I'm going to tell stories only from students who no longer ride my bus. Any name that I use will be a fake name, just like I used fake names in the last video and there'll be no mention of companies or locations, anything in this video. Anyways, I've gotten a, quite a few questions regarding bus driving, which I'll answer here, but first, I will open up with a story. People want to know about her. <laughs> Unfortunately, I only drove her for a short time, but here's the one thing I remember about her other than the whole umbrella situation. Christmas holidays was only a few days away, and it was time to pick up the students. As the teacher brought her out, she began screaming. Because ah! it was cold. So to try to distract her, one of her teachers began singing. Jingle bells, jingle bells, and then... Ba -ba 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 -ba! It was super sweet. Like, I loved it. I think she's graduated by now, and I hope her and her family are doing well. I miss her. Do you like field trips? No. Since I'm neurodiverse, I prefer routine and knowing where I'm going. Field trips or charters often take me to places I'm not really familiar with and it easily overwhelms me. I prefer to have a schedule and stick to that schedule. Do you name your bus? Do your buses have personalities? I may have named a few buses. My first ever bus was Lawrence, a wheelchair bus. He was usually pretty reliable, but a few mishaps every now and then have happened, like coolant leaks or the wheelchair lift just stopping one day. And then I had a baby bus, but I didn't name that one because I was only on it for a short time. And then I had another baby bus who I named Percy. He was hardy, but finicky. He had some issues, including a brake issue that I found out at the shop, so thankfully the mechanics were right there when it happened as well as a leak that persisted over a year that took mechanics a long time to figure out. Currently, I have Harvey, another wheelchair bus. He's been very reliable so far, no issues. Dare I say, a really useful bus. <laughs> How many Karens do you deal with on a weekly basis? Weekly? None. I only have a few kids on my bus, and all the parents and caretakers are very cooperative and good to work with. I always do my best to establish good working relationships, so they're not a problem. The Karens and Kyles tend to be drivers who hate to have to be temporarily blocked from the road. I have to go into Crescents to pick up the students at their house, if possible. And those streets tend to be a little tricky to maneuver. So, um, they get grumpy because my bus tends to take up the whole road. And not to mention, my students take a longer time to get on the bus. So, even though it's rare, it does happen occasionally. So during Halloween, not only did the Santa Claus kid dress up, he loved to tell scary stories. And it would start out the exact same way. A long, long time ago! Uh, he would make up scary stories of various monsters like werewolves, vampires, witches, mummies, clowns, Five Nights at Freddy's, killer pizza, you name it. And then he asked me to suggest an idea for him to tell a story, so I thought, and I thought, and then an idea came. How about a mad scientist? A mad scientist? You're a genius! A long, long time ago! Did you like the kids who sat up front more because you got to know them better, or did you not try to talk about non-school stuff? The ones in front tended to chat more with me, but I didn't like them more because of it. With my Catholic kids, 
While I hurt the ones in the front more, I still interacted with the ones in the back. I couldn't talk to them as much, however, because of my auditory processing disorder, and I would have a hard time understanding them. In another special needs route, I had two chatty kids, and one sat right behind me and one sat in the far back, and I was able to talk to both of them just fine, just the kid who sat in the back had to repeat a lot of things for me. What do you do when a kid throws up on the way to school? I have yet to experience this, and I hope that stays as long as possible, but we do have a procedure for that. In our emergency kits, we have a substance that absorbs liquid, so we would just pour it on the vomit, and then we just use the various items in the kit to clean it up as best as we can, and then we just come by the shop, and then they have products to make it a, a more thorough and hygienic clean. Do you just take kids to school and to their homes, or do you also use the bus to take kids on a field trip? I have the choice to do field trips, but I decline every time, so I only take them to and from school. You do get paid extra for field trips, but like I said before, field trips aren't my thing. Santa Claus Kid had a very large imagination and usually brought things on the bus with him. I'll mention two instances where he brought toys or items on the bus. He brought on large action figures of Batman, Robin, and the Joker. During the entire way back from school to his home, he provided me a very intense and thrilling show of Batman and Robin trying to defeat the Joker. Joker came back many times, but ultimately, Batman and Robin thwarted Joker just as he arrived home. I thanked Batman for protecting the bus, and then Batman gave me a kiss on the head. So charming. And then during Halloween, he made a Ghostbusters proton pack out of a Kleenex box, the Michelin Man toy, and a pencil. He was zapping ghosts left, right, and center. I couldn't believe how many ghosts were on my bus, guys. Very thankful he brought that proton pack to get rid of all those ghosts. What's the worst thing I heard while on the bus? I'll answer this in um, two ways, as one of them will get serious. The first thing is, of course, like swear words and disrespectful words to the other kids. Funny enough, my Catholic kids had an advantage on their end, because most of them were fluent in Ukrainian, and they would sometimes speak Ukrainian to each other. I don't know Ukrainian, so it's possible that they said some nasty things and I just couldn't understand them. I'm trusting that they didn't, but I'll never know. Now, here comes the serious moment. Um... One of the worst things I heard while driving came from my two-way radio. I was loading my Catholic kids onto the bus when suddenly a panicked driver began shouting through the radio, Bus number to base! One of my kids got hit by a car! Please help me! Call an ambulance! This bus was not associated with our school and was in another part of the city, but most of my students heard this. Oh no! Are they okay? Is it one of my friends? I had to keep reassuring them that they were not from that school and that the professionals would take care of everything. The bus was uh, quieter than usual that day as updates came in. Thankfully, that student who was hit only suffered a concussion and was out of the hospital shortly after. How big of an adjustment was it to go from driving a car to a school bus? Did you have to get a special license to be a bus driver? At first, the adjustment was very noticeable. It's very seamless now, but I remember when I started out, you know, during training, I would get into my car and it'd feel so weird because you spend hours driving, sitting super tall in the school bus, and then you come back to your little two-door coupe and you feel so tiny. Your way of thinking when it comes to driving changes. You're in a big vehicle. Like, you need to drive smart so you don't hit anything which can be easy to do if you're not careful. Thankfully, I have never had this happen to me, but buses have what's called a tail swing since they have a large area that sticks over their rear axles. So if you're not careful, that tail can swing out and smack adjacent cars, signs, infrastructure, you name it. You can't just turn tightly like you could in a car. You have to make a wide turn while watching your tail and making sure you're giving yourself lots of room, which can be hard sometimes. So when you go down a small or skinny street, you have to be so careful. 
You also get used to using six mirrors instead of two, each mirror serving a function to help you see where your bus is and to prevent potential accidents and impacts. Another thing is that you also have to check your bus over every single day. Normally, you just hop into your vehicle without a second thought, turn it on, and just go. But when you drive a school bus, you have to check to make sure that everything's in perfect working order. And that means checking the engine, the fluid levels, the tires, the lights, the mirrors, the bottoms of the bus, the reflecting strips, the seats, the buttons or switches, the emergency kit and fire extinguisher. And after every route, you have to thoroughly check your bus for kids. Because sometimes kids fall asleep and they don't get off at school or home. So if you don't check, they could be trapped or stranded in a bus. How traumatizing would that be for a kid to wake up all alone in a bus yard and trapped? So you gotta check every single time. You won't get in trouble if you find a kid. You will get into a lot of trouble if you leave one behind. And I don't know how every country tests school bus drivers. In Canada, though, we just need to get a special endorsement on our regular license in order to drive. So your license issuer will test you specifically for those things. You don't necessarily need a specific license to drive a school bus. It's handy, but you don't need it. But if you want to drive transit buses or big charter buses, you need to get a class 2 license. That's what's called in Canada. I don't know if it's called like that in any other country. So school bus drivers can keep their class 5 license, and that's your regular license that everyone can get. But they have an S on their license, just showing that they can legally drive a school bus. Have you ever had a situation where you needed to stop the bus, for example, a kid did something dangerous, or it could be another reason? I mean, I did stop that one time because I was laughing so much when the girl dropped her umbrella. I've stopped the bus just to make sure some medically fragile children were okay. I've also stopped the bus because the bus was having issues. Those have been, like, the only times I've stopped the bus. Hey, uh, this is Editor Lissa here. Um, I actually did remember that I did have a kind of dangerous situation happen. Like, not in the case that, our, that my life was in danger. It was more a case of one of my kids who had autism spectrum disorder he somehow wiggled out of his like special harness and just was starting to freely walk around the bus and I did not feel comfortable driving the bus while he was walking around and because uh, at least in my jurisdiction you're not allowed to touch the kids you know just to protect yourself like you can't touch them in any way so I couldn't really like make him sit down so I actually had to call the school they had to get teachers to where I was to come and take him there just because I I couldn't put him in a seat and yeah so that was the only quote-unquote dangerous one I didn't fear like he was going to attack me or anything of course not it was more for his safety I didn't want to like have to suddenly break and he's standing up and he just falls and hurts himself like no that that would not be cool so yeah that that is my interjection let's let's continue was there ever any constant drama going on with the students or teachers? I've always had good working relationships with parents, caretakers, and teachers, so I've never had drama in that sense. The most drama would probably be a child acting out of sorts and being a little bit of a bully, but that's about it. And also safety officer, well, we don't talk about that drama. So I was driving my finicky baby bus, Percy, when it began overheating. Despite checking my coolant levels, and it was at the appropriate levels, apparently Percy decided to leak it all out and overheat. So I told my students that we had to wait for the mechanics to arrive because our engine was hot. So those students understood the engine was too hot to drive. But while we were waiting, Ruble decides to say, Uh oh, fire, fire! Fire? No, 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 no! Ruble was quoting Thomas and Friends, and he was trying to say, On, on, faster, faster! But he couldn't say faster very well, and it came out as fire. <laughs> it took about like a minute or two to reassure the students that there was not a fire. And then the mechanics came, they topped up my coolant, and then we were off. What's the worst thing you ever had to clean on your bus? Snot. A kid sneezed and sprayed all over the seat in front of him, and he wiped it on his seat. Ugh. So, I've had quite a few questions regarding disruptive kids or troublesome kids, so I'm gonna lump all those questions in together. 
This is one of the reasons many people don't want to be bus drivers because kids can be very disrespectful, especially depending on what area you drive in. Now, I've had no issues with my special needs kids. It was my Catholic school who tested me, and I'm not saying they're bad. They were, they were great kids. Like, they were awesome. But I did have some that tried to test me. So I only started driving them after half a year, because that's when I returned from mat leave. So they see this brand new person, and of course it's a little awkward. They're like, oh, you're a new driver, and stuff like that. And then eventually they began to just kind of see what I would allow. Now, this is how a few things in regard of discipline. I have my core base rules that every kid should follow, like no food or drinks, be respectful, no shouting, no yelling, no bullying, stuff like that, typical rules in the bus. Those are the core rules. On the first day I introduced myself to them, I told them I don't want to have to add rules, but I will if I need to. So after a couple weeks, they began to test their luck and became a little disruptive. Oh, and it wasn't like bad or anything. It was more like trying to move to other seats while I was driving or like saying some stuff they probably shouldn't and stuff like that. So after a, well, admittedly tiring day, I decided it was time to add in a temporary rule. I was changing the seating order. Since it was mainly the older kids who were acting up, each older kid had to sit with a younger kid and they couldn't sit in the back of the bus. And for those who maybe never rode the bus, the bus usually has a hierarchy. Younger kids usually sit in the front, older kids usually sit in the back. The back is where the cool kids sat. And you gradually get yourself further back the older you are. This is more for buses who don't have assigned seating. So I put their names above their seats and they complied. The younger kids loved it. They got to sit in the back. The older ones were understandably not too happy. But they followed the rules, and I told them, as long as you guys obey the core rules, I will let up on this rule. And they did! After a couple weeks, they were back to sitting in their old arrangements. Then came a situation where we gained a few more students. The younger kids were gladly sharing their seats, but the older kids weren't so keen on sharing their seats after having these seats to themselves for most of the year. So when I arrived to school, I told the older kids I wanted to talk to them for a few minutes, so the younger kids got off, and I went to the back. And I explained a situation where they might need to start sharing seats with each other, and I allowed them to choose who they could sit with. I offered any suggestions, and one of the older students suggested that we only do this in the afternoon, and that they take turns. And I thought it was a good idea, and I made up a schedule for when each older kid needed to share their seat on which day of the week. And it worked! Because I let them negotiate respectfully, they respected the new seating arrangement. And maybe that's just one of the secrets of gaining kids' respect. Treating them appropriately to their age, stepping up when you need to, and allow for negotiations depending on the situation. Some drivers get a bit strict, sometimes ridiculously strict, with their rules. Like absolutely no talking, no food whatsoever on the bus, ever. And I disagree with that a bit, just a bit. The rules are there for a reason, and you should be able to explain them, like for safety reasons, you know, but I think there's room for reasonable flexibility. I'm fine with them talking as long as they don't get too loud and that they know to when to quiet up. For example, when we approach a railroad crossing. And I'm fine if I eat food on the bus when we're not driving, but as soon as I shift into drive, that food should be put away. They need to understand why the rules are in place. Because you just can't mindlessly follow rules if you don't know the reason why they're enforced in the first place. Quietness helps the driver listen to certain things and not distract them, especially at a railroad crossing. Eating food on the bus could potentially cause a child to choke. And not every driver is CPR certified. If the driver doesn't know why the rules are there, the kids won't know either and they see no reason to follow them. So be reasonable, step up when you need to, and be respectful. My last story is after the whole dramatic situation with that safety officer. Ruble was on the bus. And my Catholic kids loved him. They would sometimes fight to sit beside him. And they tried squeezing three into his seat area, which his car seat took up half the seat. <laughs> so one kid tried to sit on the floor. 
and I almost drove away from the school with that <laughs> questionable seating arrangement. So I let them make a deal. Each kid, after every stop, can swap to sit beside him so they would take turns. And it worked! <laughs> At each kid's stop, the rotation of three students would happen. And let's be real, I think Ruble liked the attention. And that's Tales of the Bus Part 2. I have no idea when the third one will come out, but rest assured it will eventually come out. I just essentially exhausted most of my stories from previous years, so I just wanted to warn you that it might be a while before some fresh new stories come to you. Feel free to ask me more questions that I didn't answer regarding school busing, and uh, take care everyone. <laughs>